Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Privacy Edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if you want to come by and check out the show live. Well, today we are featuring Private Internet Access as our affiliate link today. So if you are in need of a VPN, not everybody is in need of one, but if you happen to be in need of one, you're traveling around, you need to break out of a geofence, you want to, to do some things protected from your ISP and kick the can down to the uh, VPN company, Private Internet Access was found to not be holding any logs, and uh, that was actually demonstrated in court, so we'll kind of see uh, what happens there. So best information we have right now, they're an excellent VPN. Uh, they're actually running a deal right now for $70. You can get two years access. That's actually really good, $35 per year if you buy them all up, up front. Uh, $40 per for a single year and $10 for a month. Using my affiliate link there, tlm.li forward slash PIA. Let's get into the news. All right. So first, Twitter says a massive hack was a result of spear phishing attack. I did not check the news in today, but I do have a comment here on Discord that the Twitter hacker was arrested this afternoon. Um, if this article is updated, we'll read about it. If the article is not updated, and I suspect, uh, I don't know, it's CNET, it may not be. Uh, we won't see about that. But the idea was is that it was a spear phishing attack. So phishing is when you're blindly casting out the net and see what you get. Spear phishing is when you're specifically targeting certain people. So they were specifically targeting people until they found the people that had access to the high level tools. And then they spear phished those people to gain access to those high level tools. That allowed them to gain access to, I think they gained like full access, like, or near full access to 36. While well, they tweeted out of 36 accounts, they actually got uh, DMs from, I think, seven accounts. 130 accounts were targeting the attack. Uh, 45 managed to get tweets. Um, the direct messages were 37 and downloading all Twitter data from seven, 36 uh, messaging, uh, messages and um Seven got all data. Elon Musk says, I just use PMs to meme tweet, uh, tweet memes out to people. So whatever that's worth. A uh, very large scale attack. Uh, you know, it, it, it hit Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Kanye West, Barack Obama, and other bunch of people. Of course, I love the Babylon Bee write up of this. They knew it was a hack when Joe Biden's um, uh, Twitter account tweeted a coherent sentence. But, you know, <laughs> uh, that was a good one. Anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't see the update here, but, uh, I did see on discord here, uh, don't have verification that, but apparently the, uh, hacker was been arrested. So good for them, I guess. All right. Um, Netflix, they had a cred phishing scam. So this was a neat little, uh, new cred phishing scam, nothing new, but this one here was a very detailed system that actually used a few extra steps to prevent itself from being really found out. And really the difference is the same thing we saw with the downloading new malware. Oh, you had a CAPTCHA to go through first. So apparently CAPTCHAs empower malware. So maybe we need to get rid of CAPTCHAs now, right? Uh, so you have your attacker. Of course, he's a black hat hacker. You can kind of see that. And he's sending a cred, cred phishing email scam. So this looks like a very legitimate one. So uh, you, the, the reason they were able to get past virus scanners and things is because of that CAPTCHA. Same thing we saw earlier uh, a couple months ago where filling out the CAPTCHA then resulted in downloading the malicious file. The applications were not spotted by virus scanners because the CAPTCHA prevented the virus scanners from finding the information. So that's definitely interesting. And uh, so once you go through the CAPTCHA, then you land on a phishing site that resembles the Netflix screen. The only place they really messed up here is uh, there's not a good picture here. Other articles had a good picture. The URL bar is clearly not even attempting to even look like Netflix. They should have got something like, like net EX, like N-E-T-E-L-I-X, if that's available. They should have gotten that to run their cred scan because it looks a lot like Netflix. You'd miss it on cursory examination, but the URL is clearly wrong. So if you just looked at the URL bar, then, um, you know, that, that would be the case. Uh, they it would basically fix itself that of course, of course, some browsers are going where you can't really see the URL bar cause you know, clean design. Um, <laughs> 
So you log into their, their uh, phishing site and it's like, oh, you need to update your billing information. So you update your billing information and now the hacker steals your information and then they redirect you back to the real Netflix homepage. So you think that the whole process has been legitimate. So they're utilizing this to gain not only the login credentials, but also to gain your credit card information. And now, of course, if they have your login credentials, you can potentially get, get more information. So here is the, the email. So here's the email notification, uh, notice of verification failure. So uh, we have encountered some problems in our monthly verification process for billing and payment. I don't know if this looks like Netflix. I'm guessing it does. You'll have to tell me because I don't use Netflix. Um, why the attack got through. <laughs> CAPTCHA! CAPTCHA is why the attack got through. All pages hosted on legitimate domains. Okay, so... Um, so apparently all these were from like GoDaddy, of course. Now it looks like it, but again, this, okay, so this article does. You can kind of see if you can see that. This is AXXISGEO.com. Very clearly Netflix.com, you know. And so you have that. Oh, yeah, your Facebook login too. That'd be fun. Give them your Facebook login credentials too. That'd be neat. Uh, phishing flow. Ask targets to fill in their credit card information. And apparently they're, uh, oh, so the, it comes from Netfix, N-E-T-F-I-I-X, uh, at cssupport.co, which does not sound official, but most people get caught up with the first part, not the second part. The second part's one you really got to watch out for. All right, so there's basically how it goes. Of course, um, that's a neat little attack. So be careful if you have Netflix, watch out for any emails. All right, couch surfing. Uh, so couch surfing, this is, uh, this, this is one we don't talk about a lot, but it's, it's kind of one of these, it's like the, the rent a pod, rent a room, kind of like Airbnb, but instead of getting a whole house, you just get somebody's couch to sleep on. So a random stranger comes in and you can just share your couch with a random stranger. They, this just, there's the, the entire business model just, this is like, I want to write a horror novel around this. Should I write a horror novel around this, guys? He goes through and, and uh, you know, he, he goes through and he's silent. I don't want to give away the plot of the book, though. I have ideas here, but I don't want to give away the plot of the book. Anyway, uh, so we have our couch surfing going on here. And uh, apparently, though, they had a data breach, 17 million user records apparently uh, apparently find, appear up on a hacker forum for 700 bucks. So they did say no passwords were leaked. They did mention in the article that it's possible passwords did leak, at leak and they just were not included in the data dump. That is a distinct possibility. Um, but they did get user accounts, preferences, logins, 17 million people. So if you use Couchsurfer, your info's on the dark net, buddies. Go ahead and uh, beware. Be very aware. All right. Um, I do have a link here to the article in Discord. Let me go ahead there while we do boot up this guy here. Um, all right. Uh, this, so this is actually not on the news here today, but it's the link that somebody got it. This is from the Northern District of California. Three individuals charged for their roles in the Twitter hack published today. So San Francisco, three individuals have been charged today for the Twitter hack that occurred July 15th. This is from um, justice.gov. So yes, we can confirm that those were there. All right, what you're looking at the screen here that's quite terrifying is Rite Aid has deployed facial recognition systems in hundreds of U.S. stores. And so um, if you go into a Rite Aid, they just kind of silently rolled this in without a whole lot. Kind of makes me wonder, like, the... The apartment complex that's kind of across from where I'm at, they start putting in security cameras. I'm wondering if they're A, is there 5G involved? And B, are these facial recognition? They don't look like they'd be facial recognition cameras. They are definitely night vision cameras. I tested that out already. But I'm curious because they put these big boxes. I thought they were originally like the facial ID type boxes, but they're pointed vertically up. And I don't know what that means. So I'm wondering if it's two 5G repeaters. I'm going to get some photos and send it to people I know that do 5G stuff and ask them what they are. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rite Aid pushed these out. So uh, I love the bias reporting in this routers, uh, Reuters, Reuters, whatever it is, article, where they're all just like, it's all about the racism, you know, because Rite Aid's racist, apparently, because it's like it's all in these... 
these non-white neighborhoods and all these. Well, guys, statistically, that is actually where you have more crime. Um, look at the stats. Look, look at the stats. I mean, that's according to the FBI. That's according to the police databases and things, which it doesn't make any sense because facial recognition doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, Rite Aid Stores has pushed out facial recognition to over 200 stores, one of the largest rollouts of such technology among retailers. Um, parts of New York and Metro Los Angeles areas, Rite Aid deployed technology in largely lower income non white neighborhoods, according to the analysis. And more than a year, the retailer used state of the art facial recognition technology for a company with links to China and its authoritarian government. Like, when did when did our articles become so biased? Like, I hate reading the news. I hate doing the weekly news roundup these days because of how much bias is in all these articles. It's like, would you report facts and stop giving us you, these these idle emotional indictments? It's it's insane. Um, because they go down later. Oh, we have to determine that any information is actually going back to China. Well, then what does it matter where they come from? Like, every piece of software comes from China. You know, unless you want to pay an extra $2,000 for the Librem 5 U.S.-made phone. I mean, come on. So, uh, telephone and, e and email exchanges with Reuters. Since February, Rite Aid confirmed the existence and breadth of its facial recognition program. Retailer defended the technology's use, saying it had nothing to do with race as intended to deter theft and protect staff and customers from violence. Reuters found no evidence that Rite Aid's data was sent to China. Uh, last week, however, they sent its findings to the retailers. Rite Aid said it had quit using the facial recognition software. It later said all the cameras had been turned off. The decision was in part based on larger industry uh, conversation. The company told them in a statement, other larger technology companies seem to be scaling back or rethinking the efforts. Maybe, though, it has something to do with the fact that I believe New York just banned facial recognition. Um, maybe they should have included that in the article, but maybe not. Uh, but anyway, anyway, onto our feature story. We're actually onto the Debian website because they had a lot of information about this. So if you uh, if don't be concerned about the fact that your Debian had two updates to Grub this week. I mean, I know that is so unprecedented to actually see two updates in a single week for Debian for anything. Uh, the reason is because of this boot hole vulnerability. So the boot hole vulnerability, to my best understanding, and I'm not a security guy, so um, hopefully I don't get this wrong. Um, if I am contradicted by a security guy, listen to the security guy, okay? Uh, but what happens is this deals with uh, UEFI secure boot. So of course, I usually turn off secure boot because I kind of find it, you know, it's Windows software, ew. Um, but the idea is that it allows you to boot software before the operating system takes over. It allows you to boot only signed secure software to hopefully prevent malware from booting before the operating system boots. So it was created, of course, by Microsoft, and there are basically keys for Microsoft applications, but there is also non-Microsoft keys made available. So there are several Linux distributions that do support Secure Boot, and maybe maybe it's good to run Secure Boot. I don't know. Maybe I'll experiment with it at some, some point in time. But for now, I personally don't run it. But what happened is there was a vulnerability in Grub2 that allowed software to break out of this and actually run malware uh, despite Secure Boot being enabled. So what they were doing is patching this. Now, there is going to be a little changeover where all of these systems are eventually going to have to update their keys. So until the distro updates its keys and Secure Boot is enabled, you may find yourself locked out of the system until everything is, is updated and pushed across. Because we have to push out the update to Grub and we have to push out the update to the new keys and the distro itself has to update its keys as well. Three things has to happen for your system to continue to boot correctly. So while this transition is happening for the next couple months until all the distros get caught up and everything, you might have to have a case where you turn off Secure Boot to get into your Linux distribution. Windows distribution should be mostly unimpacted. However, there is also some Windows updates coming out and patching some of this on the Windows side. So if you're dual booting Windows and Linux, you might run into problems because anytime Windows updates bootloaders, it completely screws with Linux systems also on the same drive, which is why I never recommend installing them both on the same drive unless you absolutely cannot avoid it. So anyway, 
Um, so there were multiple grubs, uh, multiple grub two bugs found. So they didn't want to just patch the one. They did decide to pull the whole code. This is why there were a couple updates. Debian actually pulled the whole code and audited it all and found a few other bugs. That's why there were so many updates. So it was Debian being proactive because Debian does have a really amazing security team. So the article here goes through, it goes through the key revocations needed to fix it. This has to be done. Uh, Microsoft has to do the first one and then the downstream distributions have to push those updates through Secure Boot as well. So that's why we might find some distros fall out of Secure Boot for the period of time while this transition is occurring. So don't be alarmed if that happens to occur. So you can kind of see where the updates are and there's more information on the Debian's website. So there's the thoughts on the news. Let us know your th comments on all these down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.